MovieWeb.com. Life after college is not exactly what James expected. I don't have much work experience. James, if I pronounce that right, James? Yeah. By accepting this t-shirt, you are... Hired. Now, you get to deal with exciting career opportunities. Ooh, nasty. You'll get better at avoiding that. On the job training. You get a five minute bathroom break every two hours. I recommend saving a few of those up in case you have to go number two. And inspiring leadership. All right, the race is on. We have a winner. Here's this. Hey, James, have you ever seen a horse race before? how we met. Well, I want to know, and I know you've been asked this a bazillion times, but with the anaphylactic shock, are you really allergic to peanuts, or was that just sort of a nod back to the television series? Um, Did we even talk about that? No. We haven't, actually. No one, no one ever brought that up. You, um, you tapped uh, into something. I actually wrote that joke before I knew Martin was going to play the part, and then Martin came in, and I was like, well, you know, Martin was on my mind for the part, but I didn't connect the thing. And then when he read the line, I thought, oh, it's Bill Haverchuk's, yeah. He needs an EpiPen. <laughs> <laughs> he needs an EpiPen that he just carries around with him. Yeah, I don't, that connection uh, flew right by me. It did not. All right, all right. But uh, no one ever asked that question. No, yeah, that's good. That's good really, deep knowledge. I would have thought knowledge if... when I saw it, they were like, ha ha. They like, <laughs> thought it was geeks. really funny. And well, I thought I should maybe change it, but then I thought, no. I love Freaks and Geeks. Freaks and Geeks, Freaks and Geeks was a, one of the inspirations for writing this. It's one of the things where I saw that's a depiction of middle class life that just is completely they got it right. And often I feel like, oh, that's too sitcommy and sentimental the way they're showing in middle class life. Freaks and Geeks was just perfect. Now I wanted to ask you about the look of this film is sort of timeless because if I was flipping through channels and this came on, I wouldn't automatically know it was in 1987. I'm wondering how did you decide to go with sort of a more just like basic aesthetic instead of like looking at old movies from the 80s and kind of copying their style? I because I, my memory of being in the 80s is that we didn't actually all dress like characters from Pretty in Pink. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we dressed like kids in t-shirts most of the time. And uh, I didn't want it to be an 80s kitsch fest. And also, I grew up in a kind of, uh, you know, modest community where people still had their old cars from the 70s and their furniture from the 60s, because people just didn't throw things away if they still worked. Uh, and that was the kind of world I wanted it to be set in. And we didn't have that big a budget, so we couldn't have <laughs> afforded the sets from Dynasty. And now with Martin coming in, did he kind of take over the character and form it and shape it? Or was that always what you had intended on the page of the script? Is Martin brought himself to it a lot. Um, but I have to say that of all the people who read the character, Martin made him the most human, soulful, and lovable. Everyone uh, else was robots. All the other people that auditioned were robots. <laughs> yeah. Aliens. I, you just yeah. auditioned robots. Yeah. I should, have, I should have had more humans come in. It's <laughs> <laughs> just one, and that's it. And yeah, and I got to give it to the one human. Well, you knew he was going to be in the movie. I mean, you knew you were going to be in the movie before the casting process, or did no, you actually I had, go no. through the casting? I, no, I made him cast. I'm a jerk. Oh, right. He's my friend, and I made him. Uh, yeah, I dick. put him. I humiliated what a him. Huge and, yeah. dick. Um, I, I, I had. I didn't think after the casting process I would be in the movie. I did a horrible <laughs> job. Why? I did a horrible job of the audition. I don't think I said one of the words as they were written on the page. No? Is that true? That's, <laughs> no, that's not true. Now, how did you guys find this adventure land? I mean, because this looks, in the 80s, it seems like it still looks the same now. In the 90s and 2000, this place hasn't uh, it changed was one bit. It was hard to find an amusement park that hadn't been, kind of, uh, had a corporate makeover. Because most of them have been, all the mom and pop amusement parks have been bought up and and are part of chains now, uh, which is part of the quaintness of the 80s. That was before that happened to all of America. Um, it's a place in Pittsburgh called Kennywood, and it's, it's, it's actually in the National Historic Register, so they don't renovate it very much. So it was perfect. I went to college in Pittsburgh. I have a real affection for the city, so that's how we landed there. Adventureland. You mean drinking drugs? I think I had a bad corn dog. Yeah, don't ever eat the corn dogs. Let me go out. 